So Carlos asked, how do you make menus and Zelda like health? And I think that's kind of difficult and a good thing to cover. Menus in GPC are a little bit tricky, but I'll show you a real quick and easy way to get some done. So the first thing you want to do is in Photoshop or any other pixel program, you want to create a menu, of course. If you can't edit um, an image in Photoshop and you're wondering what the heck's going on, go to mode and change it to RGB color. Just change the mode. And then um, if you, um, in GB Studio, you don't put text. You don't put text um, in the engine. You have to do it in the image. So you're going to have to write all your options into the background image. Um, it's a cool little trick, but that's how it works. If your text isn't crisp like this, up at the top over here, if I switch it to crisp, which I think it'll be that for, by default, it looks kind of blurry. So if you don't want your text to be blurry and uh, switch the switch it to none and none will make your text nice and clean. The text I'm using here, if you like what it looks like, you can download it online for free. Just search Blocktopia. There's a bunch of pixel texts, so um, you should have no problem finding that. So what I did for the menu is um, I drew a couple of arrow keys. These are all just, you know, just uh, images, each one of these elements. And this arrow key is gonna represent the different options. So to player presses left, they'll go to stats, right, items. You get the idea. So click the title screen scene. You can put this in any scene, but um, you might as well put it in one of the first scenes so that way players can access this menu early. Um, as you can see, there's a draw pad input here for the, uh, for, that listens to start. And this is what opens up this menu right here. So we're just gonna make another one. Oops, oh gosh. So we're just gonna make another one that's going to listen to select. And select for GB Studio on the computer is the shift button. So right in here, in this event group, add an event and, and search Joypad. And we're going to search do, Joypad um, attach script to button. And then the button that's going to pull up our game menu is going to be the select button. And we're going to um, uh, store the, the current scene on a stack. And I'll explain what that is in a second. So you can just search stack and um, the same as the other menu, you're going to go with current on stack. Normally, if you change scenes, it gets rid of the scene you are in. With the store current on stack, is it'll put this scene on top of the scene you are in. And then when it's removed from the stack, you'll just go back to where you were in the previous scene. So it's perfect for menus. So here we go, we're gonna change the scene. So just search for uh, switch scene. And the scene we want to go to is uh, scene 12, which is it's correct. I'm gonna change the fade speed so it pops up quick since it's a menu we don't wanna, uh, we don't want people waiting. I'm gonna switch the name to main menu since that's what this will be. And there we go. We have a main menu that should open up when the player presses select, which is shift. Let's go ahead and test that. And now if I press shift, Here's the new menu that I created. The funny thing is though, when you, <laughs> when you switch scenes, the character is always there. So what you have to do is you have to hide the character. But you could actually do something pretty creative where the character walks around and actually interacts with these. These could be sprites and you interact with them. So you could have um, kind of a creative menu, but we're definitely going to listen to uh, these buttons right here and that's how we're gonna use the menu. And in the menu, add event, hide and we're going to hide the player and that's it now the player is hidden but the menu doesn't do anything so we need to listen to the button presses so to create the menu input controls what you need to do is create a loop a loop that'll check for joypad input just search joypad and then select um, if joypad input pressed Make sure you don't do attach script to button because it'll rep replace the character controls. So make sure you use the input pressed. The reason this is inside of a loop is because we need to constantly check these as long as you're in the menu. Remember that things go sequentially unless you put them in a loop. So the first one that we're checking is left and I skipped over to the right and up because I haven't created an items or a map menu. But for down, all we need to do is restore first from stack. So remember that this scene is going to be stacked on top of whatever area that the player's in. 
So by restoring the first from stack, it'll go back to wherever the player is. I'm just gonna change this to speed one since it's a menu item I wanted to quickly transition. So now going to the stats menu, which this is just a scene that I created. To go over there, what um, we need to do is um, um, store the current on stack and switch scene. And I'm just switching to the stack scene right here. When you make icons for the menu, make sure that they're 16 by 16 and use the, green, the bright green as a transparency. So in this scene, I'm going to show the player health in a text dialogue so they can see exactly how much health they have. But each one of these hearts is going to represent 10 health. So we got five of them here. So we'll use like 50 as the maximum amount of health. So in the title screen where the player creates a new game, that's where we want to set the player health. We only have five hearts, so I'll set it to 50. But this is also where you could set um, the experience and all other stats that you want to start the player off with. So what we'll want to do is check the player's health and hide the, the correct amount of hearts. You can search compare and make sure you're, you're checking the player health. And if it's less than or equal to um, 40, that means we need to remove one heart. And we're going to hide the fifth heart because this means that the player has four hearts or less. And we're gonna do this same thing for each heart. So what we can do is copy the event and then click here again and paste event after. This time, just make sure you're going to hide heart four and keep lowering the um, less than or equal to amount. All right, there we go. All right, so if I press shift, open up the menu, then press left, you can see I have all five hearts and it says I have 50 health. I have to press Z to make the dialogue go away and now I can press um, um, shift again to go back. So in the squirrel that I set up in the previous tutorial for combat, all I did was add an attack for the squirrel. I did a math function which takes the player health and it subtracts 10. So the, attack, the squirrel's attack is gonna be 10. And then I show that to the player within a text dialog. The squirrel attacked you for 10 damage. And then you have dollar sign, 19 dollar sign health. So it'll show the variable so that the player can keep track of their health. All right, so let's fight this squirrel. I'm gonna let it hit me a couple times and then I'll check my hearts. So you can see now that it's showing us, it's telling us how much health we have. So we have 40 health, but I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna go ahead and attack it one more time. Now I should have 30 health, yep. And I'm gonna run. Now when I check the stats, you can see I only have three hearts and it says I have 30 health. Now shift makes you go back from this menu. Um, but if you wanted to also make it down like it is on this main menu screen what you can do is create a loop in that scene so if you remember in main menu we created a loop that listens for um, a joypad input there, that's not on the um, stats screen because um, this will actually um, the the shift button will still actually work but if you wanted to make it down all you need to do in here is do a loop and then in that loop, do joypad uh, if input pressed. So switch that to down, add the event. If you want it to go back to the menu, then what you do is um, restore the previous stack. But if you want it to go to exit all the way back to um, where the player is, you can restore um, the first from the stack. I'm just gonna do previous from stacks. So it'll take us back to the main menu. And there you go, there's a simple menu for you.
for items in a map, I might cover that in another video. Let me know in the comment section below if you would, if that's what you would like to see. You can follow me on Twitter if you're into game dev related stuff. That's what I use it for. And if you want, you can download the project on itch. There's a link in the description below. Feel free to use the sprites and the code however you'd like.